We're taking you inside one of the busiest airports in the world. We'll uncover secrets to make your next connection easy. Head out onto the airfield, get up close and personal with jumbo jets, and show you all the work going on behind the scenes to make sure you have a smooth trip through the world's most connected airport. Hello, jet setters. Welcome to Frankfurt Airport. This is Airports Reveal. Located in the very heart of Europe, Frankfurt Airport is a massive operation with up to 240,000 passengers per day and 1,600 takeoffs and landings in a day. It's also Germany's largest place of employment with nearly 81,000 people working on the airport's campus. And like every other airport in the world, it's the people who make it run. We'll meet many of them today. But first, let's unfasten our seatbelts and explore a bit. You've just landed in Frankfurt. Well, what next? Well, for you, there are plenty of options. There's no better place to start than the airport's iconic entrance hall. It's from here that many people say goodbye to Frankfurt and hello to the world. I'm not sure I love anything in an airport quite the same as a departures board. I could stare at this thing forever. And there's no more iconic departure board in the world than this one here at Frankfurt Airport. You know, it was originally put in here in 1972, then redone in 1999. This is the last board like this in the world. And with 330 destinations, Frankfurt has earned its place as the world's most connected airport. Which of these cities would you most like to visit? Let me know in the comments below. Frankfurt has four runways, one of which can only be used for landing and another is limited to departures. We've started our day in Terminal 1, home to Lufthansa, its Star Alliance partners, along with a few other airlines. This entire section of Terminal 1 will soon be behind security. It's a massive project the airport's working on that should begin this summer. The airport even has its own visitor center, and you could spend plenty of time here. But there's also bus tours of the apron. So if you come over here and have some extra time, you can get out there and really explore this place. The Visitor Center has tons of exhibits highlighting so much of what happens here. This interactive map, or globe really, is incredible. You're able to track all the flights all over the world at any time, including the arrivals and departures here at Frankfurt. This is such an incredible tool. Fraport has really embraced technology here. Visitors can even test out their marshalling skills by guiding this A320 into a gate. Four stars! I consider that a win. <laughs> One of my favorite things has got to be the simulator right here, which shows you what it's like to be your suitcase, your piece of luggage, going through the conveyor system here at Frankfurt. Whoa, holy mackerel! On September 29th, 2018, this system set its record for the most outbound bags handled in a single day with a mind-blowing 112,566 pieces of luggage. <laughs> In places like the United States, airports are owned by governments, but that's not the case everywhere, which is where Fraport, the publicly traded company that owns and operates Frankfurt Airport, comes in. For more on that, let's turn to Thorsten Ostheimer. I know that in the US uh, and in many other parts of the world, airports are owned by the government, but usually the, the issue with that is that uh, it's really more an administration than uh, business for them. We as a private operator, we are looking to, to, take a to make a business out of this and uh, you can only make a business out of this if you, if you care for the people who are there and if you add value to the people and then they will join the airport, they will spend their money. Not only does Fraport operate this airport, but they also have stakes in others around the world. From Peru to Greece and even India, this company is everywhere. This model of the Frankfurt Airport is absolutely spectacular. I think I could stay here all day, but it's time to move on. So let's get an overview of the airport from Bjorn Daniel Vieta, senior business consultant. Frankfurt Airport here on, on this location since 1936. Two terminals in operation, third uh, terminal under construction, four runways. One is landing only, one is departure only, some dependencies, so really a, a complex airport, but it's an intercontinental hub multi-directional, so you can basically fly, fly to, to anywhere in the world from here in 24 hours. Frankfurt Airport is the multimodal hub of Germany. It even has a train station. Runway, high-speed rail. This is why Frankfurt is an intermodal center. As we prepared to go behind the scenes, I asked Bjorn what we should expect. Mm, I think the key term would be orchestration, because everything has to be orchestrated to an extent planned ahead and not a lot of 
predictive systems are running in the background trying to predict when the aircraft will be on stand when you know and and all the downstream processes are linked to these predictions everything's about the people the people are in, in the center of everything we do so it, it's all about people aviation is a people business and it's here in the integrated control center where all the efforts of all those people is focused. You see, representatives from all departments, airlines, and functions stay here 24 7 to move resources around the airport to make your experience as quick and efficient as it can be. Often, when we travel through airports, we're standing in lines, maybe in security or something like that. Well, there's a whole team in many airports, like Frankfurt here at the Integrated Control Center, who are looking out for you and making sure that those lines are as short as possible. It always amazes me just how many people are involved in making an airport experience happen. And there's this whole team here at Frankfurt Airport that you and I may never interact with who are looking out for your experience and making it as efficient and smooth as it possibly can be. If you've ever wondered where the announcements from overhead are coming from, it's this sound booth right here. If you ever find yourself with a question here at Frankfurt Airport, there are 12 of these InfoGate systems that work really well for answering your questions. So let me check it out. All right, I've just checked in for my Lufthansa flight and I want to go to the lounge. What's the closest lounge? The closest lounge is on your left hand side escalator upstairs. It says Lux Lounge, L U W X. How easy is that? But this is a behind the scenes video, so let's go behind the scenes where fraud board employees answer some 600 questions each day. That's about 200 for each person on a given shift. Now, because Fraport owns Frankfurt Airport and owns and operates airports all over the world, the company is constantly innovating about how to make processes more efficient. One example is this new baggage check-in system. It's meant to replace these conveyor belts, which have been in use for some 60 years. She's now uh, opening the door, putting her bag inside. Uh, the door will close. The bag will be injected into the BHS system. The system which you see here is brand new. We started uh, to operate this since November last year. It's a quite efficient process. It takes about 20 seconds for a passenger to drop the bag and to be ready to fly. So even more of those machines are being installed right here and eventually the entire airport will have them replacing that 60 year old technology with something brand new developed right here at Frankfurt. And now, welcome to the part of the airport you're probably most familiar with. This is, of course, the terminal. Here at Frankfurt, they're constantly trialing and engineering, designing and developing new technologies that make the whole process so much more simple. For example, Fraport has embraced the use of biometrics, requiring 30% less time for passengers compared to scanning boarding passes. Every week, we have about three to 4,000 passengers using the biometrics in Frankfurt and just using the magic moments. You just approach the flip gates at the pre-security, at the boarding gate. There's nothing you need to do, just smile into the camera and process through. Around 50% of passengers at Frankfurt are connecting somewhere else. So that means many people have experienced it through the fog of jet lag. Now that also means many people have some pretty strong feelings about the place. I know some passengers think of Frankfurt Airport as being crowded or confusing or requiring massive distances of walking. There are some secret hacks here I want to share with you. Let's, uh, let's check them out. One of those hacks is this tunnel. It connects Terminal A to Terminal B and makes the connection that much faster. And just like that, we're in Terminal B. But ultimately, the number one hack is pretty straightforward. It's to give yourself plenty of time. There's no hiding the fact that Frankfurt is a really big airport, which can mean long walks. You might even face additional security and passport checks, depending on where you're coming from and where you're going. Now it's worth saying that airlines determine minimum connection times at airports, and I've successfully made connections here in as little as 45 minutes. But even still, I'd recommend avoiding international connections of less than 90 minutes if at all possible. The number one thing to remember here at Frankfurt Airport is just to simply follow the signs, and, and on all of the departures boards, you'll find walking times on your gate. There are more than 1,000 of these displays throughout the Frankfurt Airport. When you look at the signs here in Frankfurt Airport, you often see A and Z right next to each other, which can be kind of confusing. But Z gates are on top of A. It allows the Frankfurt Airport to use those jet bridges in multiple ways. So often international flights, many to the US in fact, are in the Z gates, which again are just right on top of these gates here at A. And some signs have a secret. Sometimes at Frankfurt Airport, things can get really busy and the people in the operations center are keeping an eye on that. And when it does happen, they'll use these dynamic signs to move people around and, and clarify uh, traffic flow so people don't have to wait as long.
So you have some time at Frankfurt Airport? What is there to do? Well, turns out a lot. Frankfurt Airport is full of places to relax and uh, rest up between flights if you're making a connection. If you want to take a nap, you can do it right here in the nap cab. But if you need a boost of caffeine and have two euros, you can uh, hook yourself up right here at this machine. Or you can grab a newspaper for free. Am I too old to go down the slide? Probably. There's also this quiet room for reflection. I can't think of why they call it such a thing. There's a movie theater, a game room, and of course, plenty of lounges. But if you don't have lounge access, no problem. You don't have to look too hard to find places to sit quietly. You'll even find showers. But maybe the best thing to do at Frankfurt is to check out the big birds that are here. Lufthansa bases at 747s in Frankfurt, which for any fan of the Queen of the Skies, makes this one of the best places to check out the eye candy. If Terminal 1 is dominated by the Star Alliance, pretty much everyone else is over in Terminal 2. It has a completely different look and feel. Let's head over there. And the best way to do that is on the Skyline train, an automated people mover between Terminals 1 and 2. Eventually, it'll connect all the way to Terminal 3. That's currently under construction. The Skyline opened in 1994 and carries some 10 million people each year. Terminal 2 also opened in 1994 and is home primarily to members of the One World and Sky Team alliances, along with unaligned airlines like Emirates. So we're here at kind of an off time, which means it's pretty empty in here, but I think it goes without saying, this is an absolutely stunningly beautiful space. While you're upstairs enjoying shopping and lounges and restaurants, the real action is happening down here on the apron. Let's check it out. There really is so much happening down here below the wing. There are just so many professionals operating behind the scenes in roles vital to making the airport operate. As you're uh, getting on the plane, boarding up and getting ready for your trip, uh, Frankfurt Airport is providing power right here, ground power to the plane to keep things running. German Air Traffic Control is the DFS and uh, they run that tower up there. Like Fraport, they're a private company, but separate to the one that runs the airport operation. Here behind me is the construction of the new Terminal 3 here at Frankfurt Airport. This video is not sponsored, but getting this kind of access would be impossible without support and assistance from Fraport. I want to say a huge thank you to the team here at Fraport. Uh, producing these Airports Revealed videos is impossible without partnering with uh, airport professionals. And the team here who've helped me coordinate all of this are tremendous heroes in my eyes. If you've ever found yourself on a plane waiting for a gate, it can sometimes be because there aren't any marshallers there to guide your pilots in. Here in Frankfurt, they have an alternative system. They use these automated docking guidance systems that allow pilots to just uh, taxi right up to the gate. Back at many airports in the U.S., we have marshallers. Those are the folks with the orange batons that help pilots come into the gates. So uh, just another example of the technology that uh, Frankfurt Airport is leaning into uh, to make the process a bit more efficient. There's a 747 parked right here, and then this is the back of the automated docking guidance system. Of course, it's the airplanes that get much of the attention here. It's understandable. But the sheer number of vehicles operating at an airport never ceases to amaze me. And the opportunity of a lifetime came when I was invited to step inside this super tug. We're about to push this uh, Cathay A350 back to uh, the gate where it's going to pick up its passengers. We'll taxi from a remote stand near Terminal 3 across the airfield, talking to air traffic control to get permission to cross behind the active runways before parking at Terminal 2. We have a whole crew here. This is uh, kind of a lot. It's a lot more than usual anyway. Cathay Pacific's flight arrives at Frankfurt around 6.30 in the morning, but doesn't leave again until 1.45 in the afternoon. We've turned around. Now we're on our way across the airport to the, uh, to the gate. Now, because gate space is highly sought after, planes can't just sit at the terminal all day. So super tug drivers tow planes to remote stands. Not something you typically see in your rearview mirror, is it? We're taking this A350-1000 back to its gate so it can take on fuel, catering, cargo, and eventually passengers before starting its flight back to Hong Kong. This vehicle is so powerful that it just feels like I'm riding down the taxiway um, 
any other vehicle. It's hard to believe there's a giant A315 1000 uh, behind us. The nearly 200 tons are no match for the power of this machine. Thank you so much. That was absolutely unbelievable. With all of these airplanes and vehicles operating out here on the apron, it's up to special professionals called apron controllers to maintain order out here. Now let's head to a unique spot here at Frankfurt Airport to understand how that works. From the moment your airplane pushes off the gate, there are apron controllers who are watching it, making sure that it's moving safely and efficiently through the apron. Now, the training for that skill set, believe it or not, takes a total of two years, but the very beginning of it happens here in this simulator, which is basically a complete replica of the towers here at Frankfurt. This is another simulator room, and this one represents the apron control tower on top of Terminal A. Now, an important distinction, in the United States, we often refer to the area that's not runway as a ramp. Here in Europe, they tend to call it an apron, but what we never call it is a tarmac. That's always wrong. The simulation has been running for a little while, and you can see without any apron controllers, it turns into a mess really quickly. So this role is an absolutely vital one to those of us looking to move through Frankfurt Airport or really any major airport efficiently. Back on the apron, it was time to help some passengers begin their journey. I'm about to get into this into this tug to push this A330 back. This is this is next level. This right here is Lufthansa Flight 416 out to Washington, Dulles. So the way these tugs work is pretty remarkable. This part of the uh, of the tug uh, will come forward and then lift up the, the nose wheel of the airplane. I think we've reached showtime here. All right, so the pushback is beginning. We are pushing back. The amount of power in this vehicle is overwhelming. I mean, we're, we're, push, we're pushing a massive A330 like it's nothing. It's right there. This, this is unreal. We're saying goodbye to the A330. Its next stop is, of course, Washington Dallas. Should get around, uh, get in around 12:30 or so. Uh, it'll be traffic. That was unbelievable. And they're on their way to Washington with the smallest amount of help from me. <laughs> I think it's critical to acknowledge that, as amazing as the operation is, and it is incredible. It's the people here who have these roles all over the airport that make it happen. It's thanks to them that these flights go at all. So next time you're flying, be sure to recognize all of the professionals, both seen upstairs and unseen down here, that make it all happen. Between now and the next time, see you at the airport. Just to clarify, Suzanne is here. Uh, she's just uh, <laughs> operating the camera and running the logistics. There are ramp towers. Apron control towers. <laughs> this is, uh, let me just tell you folks, this is not a good place to have an interview for a couple of guys who really like airplanes. <laughs> this is taking way longer than it should. <laughs> this is now the second time we've stood here for about, I don't know, 10 minutes waiting for this board to change. <laughs> Last time, as soon as we walked away, it changed. And I remember it so fondly, and that's really loud in the background. I'll probably cut this part out, but it doesn't matter, because I'm looking good for that camera. Hopefully we're gonna get to see it, you know, flip. It's pretty amazing when it does. They're my hosts right there, look, there they are, trying to get off camera, there. So the simulation has been running for a little while, and you can see without any ramp, oh, uh, flip. <laughs> what, was it, what was it like being an apron controller? I actually was fired before I was hired as an apron controller. <laughs>